I am the Commissar. That's my name. Forged Alliance Forever. That's the game. And who have we got with a claim to fame? Well, we have 12 players battling it out today, and you're thinking maybe we got a Team Eleven is the Team Tea Time, or a Team Lunch Time and a Team Supper Time, or something, but no. No, we don't. We have four teams today. We have the Northern Team, the Eastern Team, the Southern Team, and the Western Team. So everybody's going to be fighting on two fronts. It's going to get messy, it's going to get dirty. Let's see who we've got. In the anti-clockwise position for the Northern Team, this is Nyx, whom we saw last game. He's 1200 rated, he's Cybran in Fecal Brown. Central position for the Northern Team, this is X Raw X Legit X, whom we're going to call Legit. Is he too legit to quit? We'll find out. That ages me a bit, doesn't it? When was that? Early 90s, I think? 91? I may be wrong, correct me in the comments below. MC Hammer. Anyway, Legit is 1700 rated and UEF in orange. Moving on to the clockwise position for Northern Team, this is the Egg Roll, who is 1600 rated. He's Cybran in grass green. And on to the Eastern Team. In their anti-clockwise position, we have C2118 Freedom, 1900 rated and UEF in red. In their central position, we have Barg 6516, or Bihag, we're going to call him Barg. He's 1200 rated and Eon in Burgundy. Last but not least for the Eastern team, this is Ross Boys 3, who's 1100 rated and Eon in Mauve. Now for the Southern team. This fellow here is CM Nicholas who is 1700 rated and Cybran in blue. In their central position, we have... Who's that? That's Hyper2001. He's 1400 rated and Eon in green. Now, we've seen Hyper before being ever so keen on telesnipes, but he's not doing that today because he's Eon. So, new strategy maybe. And last but not least for the Southern team, this is Sanoman, who is 1500 rated and who is UEF in white. Everybody on the Southern team in Clan FC, so maybe they'll be well coordinated. In the anti-clockwise position for the Western team, and already quite far forward in this expansion, we have Wekatha, who is 1500 rated and UEF in pink. Centrally for this team we have Twitchy Mofo, 1300 rated and Seraphim in yellow. And last but not least, already all the way up front here with some labs getting some good works done. They I think they've killed a couple of engines already. This fellow is can't get a good angle on him. Anyway, whatever angle I can get on him, this is Crusader Nova, he's 1600 rated and he's in purple, and he's already got Nix's Con descending upon him. So those early labs, yeah look at that, they got two kills each, that's some good raiding and they but now rather than go and try and grab this engineer, they're going to join Crusader in fighting Nix's com. We've also got both Barg and Ross, especially Ross, advancing on Nicholas and Nicholas coming to defend, but look at all that spam coming in from Barg. Looks like Nyx is going to retreat to the water here as Crusader fires upon him. But he's in trouble, but we've also got a com fight going on down here. Nova and Nyx, Nicholas and Ross. I think this is a mistake from Crusader trying to build mixes while he's under fire. He could just be shooing off Nyx and then worrying about his eco in a bit. 
He's got a couple of tanks coming in, but not many, and so has Nix. Ross is taking quite a lot of fire though, because there's Mantis here. In fact, Ross is quite badly surrounded. Crusader deciding this isn't worth holding right now, and he falls back, letting Nix take the position. And that could be wise, because Legit is getting the gun upgrade behind him. On this side, Ross is badly injured, but so is Nicholas, and Barg's brought in spam to support. Ross makes it to the water, and Ross is safe. Now, while all that's been going down, Wekitha has got gun and is on his way to fight Salaman, who's still on his upgrade play trying to get T2. Wekitha has a bit of spam, Salaman has more, but Wekitha's got that gun. Can he force a cancel from Salaman? No, he cannot. And Hyper is coming in as well, so this could be a problem for Wekitha, but Hyper doesn't have the gun. Sunnerman's got the T2 hit points, but he's already taken some damage. However, Sunnerman's got more spam around here, and he's blocking. Look at that lovely block as he stops Wekitha from running away, and the two comms come in to sandwich him. Wekitha brings bombers to help out, but he's shedding hit points fast. Hyper's still in the green. Salaman might do to back off in a little bit, but that said, he's not really under threat at the moment. Oof, Wekitha could be in quite a... He's into the red, but he gets a crucial rank of vet. Salaman is wisely backing away as Wekitha's tanks surround him. Wekitha's not going to survive this, though. and Salaman looks like he might be in trouble. But bombs and fire rain down on Hyper. Hyper looks like he was going to be safe, but he's taking a lot of damage. Can he kill Wekitha? No, he's into the red. If they die, this is going to be a double kill, and Hyper has nothing to lose now. Well, his life, but Hyper's got no way out. Boom! Both of them go up in our first kill of the game, and it's a double kill. It's a draw. Wekitha and Hyper blow each other up and Sanoman is hurt. Sanoman is into the red and fleeing, but there's nothing really there to... Um... Oh! Over here, Freedom is going to finish the gun, but Eggroll's already got gun, Eggroll's got spam. There's some spam coming in from Freedom, but Freedom might have to back up. In fact, is Freedom going to make it out of here? As long as Eggroll can... Oh, good overcharge. As long as Eggroll can surround Freedom with this spam, I think he will win the day and he'll even make it out alive. Especially if he... Oh yes, look at this. Freedom is in trouble, my dudes. Will nobody come to defend Freedom? The answer is apparently no. Freedom looks like he's going to explode. Ooh, defense from the cliff. Will Freedom escape thanks to the terrain? No, he will not. Eggro gets the line on him and boom. But Eggro too is down into the red and there are tanks that from Freedom that I assume... Who's going to inherit them? Um, Barg. That might cause a problem for Eggro, but what's that I see? Over here, Eggro is surrounded by Barb's tanks and is looking in trouble, but on this side, Crusader has been pincered by Legit and Nyx. I don't think Crusader is getting out of there. Boom! He is not. And on this side, a crucial rank of vet for the Eggro is going to save him, and he's now got spam coming to back him up. He's going to be fine. Whoa! Meanwhile, in the bottom right, Ross is streaming units in to try and save him, but it looks like Nicholas might have Varg on the ropes. Varg is into the red, but he's running for the water. Will he make it? So close. 300. Two, he's, oh! Down goes Varg, run down by Nicholas and his tanks, just before 
he makes it to safety, poor Barg. So now we've got Twitchy all on his own on this side, Ross all on his own on this side, and a full team in the north and two out of three in the south. Nicholas is actually now being chased down by the tanks from Ross, but I don't think there's enough to take out a guncom with two vets. He's shedding hell and he's into the red but he's dodging quite well, he knows how to dodge this artifact from the furthers and this tanks have stopped, these boys needed to chase, Nicholas is going to get away and Ross's tanks retreat oof quick look at the eco so team north are ahead by about 50 Ross all on his own and the southern team are then about equal and com so we're using them as the baseline and then Twitchy all on his own over here is behind by about 50. There's a lot of raid coming in to try and do some more damage to Polvo. Twitchy who's probably going to lose that T2 mech though he has got Ilshis in defence. Okay maybe you won't lose that mech so Ilshis are eating through that Mantis raid. But the Jits coming and claiming these two expansions, there's nothing Twitch you can really do to stop it. He can send this raid in, but there's T2 PD going up, and sure, he may lose a couple of PGens, but those PD should be more than enough to stop this raid. There are a couple of pillars in there, though. Well, that's, that's not doing badly. But how much it's going to try and take out the PGen. If it takes out the PGen, that would be a nice catch. But I don't think it's got the raw firepower to do that. It does not. Legit retreating to the safety of the water here. First player to take a cowardly exit into the sea. Ross really doubling down on his gun here. He's got range and he's getting advanced range. He's got a big force of T1 tanks. Is he going to try and go for a gun and push in on Nicholas? Looks like Sutherman's taken some damage again. Oh, I can see some gunship wrecks around here, so... And Flak having been thrown up by Sutherman, so I'm guessing that was twitchy. Sorry, we missed that. Ooh, this is interesting though. We have T3 land from Ross. What other tech do we have? A couple of T2 air and land everywhere else. Most people are at T2. But um, that T3 from Ross is the only T... Oh no, T3 air from Nicholas. So we could be in for some fun there. Another big raid coming in from Twitchy against Nyx and Legit. Legit brings his com in and Legit's got gun on him. And there are now more T2 PDs to defend here. Oh, we've almost got T3 finished for Nyx. That's an awful lot of pillars though. And I don't know if there's enough firepower here to stop it. This would be an amazing kill, this almost finished T2 HQ, if they could get it. But it looks like he's not noticed or hasn't got the APM to focus. Still, taking out that reduction capacity is good. And he takes out a mech. This is a nice raid. 
from Twitchy. But he's worrying about the PBs. I would in his position. I think he could have done something about that HQ if he'd either seen or known about it, but the two come to burn a clear attack. Meanwhile, the egg roll is under pressure as a large wave of dudes comes in from Ross, and we mentioned Ross's T3. Here are some titans. The egg roll has a point defense, and his comms got gun and stealth. Stealth's not going to help when they're surrounding him, but it does give him a hit point boost as well. I think egg roll might be forced back to the water by this amount of pressure with this amount of T3 in it. And as if that weren't enough, Ross has units charging up here through the egg rolls eco here, carving out mexes and into the eco of the jit. So this is great work from Ross. I'm loving it. A strat out from Nicholas. He's decided that egg roll is the biggest threat and he goes for egg rolls and HQ. Also trying to pick up some mexes, two mexes with a nice carefully planted area effect bomb there. The air HQ is pung and that has just reached T3 from the jet. But I don't know if that bomb is going to get much more done as Sams are being thrown up in defence. However, Eggro has more than just that strat to worry about because this force from Ross is just charging straight into his main base. This could be very painful and that was already a T3 mix so one hit from a strat isn't enough to kill it but even so this is going to hurt my guys. Eggro's having to bring his combat to fight, try and fight all this off. A suggestion to, by one of his teammates to send Ross's units in to take out the Jets Eco and indeed he does, that's the right choice. The Strat is helping out Ross but it gets shot down by the Sap. I say helping out Ross, it's more enemy of my enemy thing. Interesting choice, a lot of torpedo bombers from Ross, maybe he thinks that somebody will try and hide in the water and then he can snipe them. However, no one's hiding in the water just at present. That T3 mech would be a nice kill if these titans can make it, and up here, Legit has brought his comm back here. There's only one, in fact there's no titans left, that's the Mongols. So Legit should be able to stop that before it gets much more damage done. Over here though, that T3 mech is going down. Boom. And with that brutality, South Team... Actually, I was about to, it looks like they were about to catch up, but they haven't. They have. They're ahead. They're there we go, yes. They're about for 50 to 100 mass ahead of the Northern Team now. So, look at this damage. That has been particularly delicious if you're, you know, if you're not rooting for the Northern Team. If you are, it might leave a sour taste in the mouth. And during all that, Ross sending all his units up here, Nicholas firing strap bombers in, no movement here. Do Ross and Nicholas have a truce? Could they have allied against the common enemy of the Eggwell, Legit and Nyx? More little titan work getting done here by Ross, who... Ross is the lowest rated player in today's game, and I, he's been performing pretty impressively. Making sure he gets into us, he sends scouts around. Barg and Freedom both advising him, Freedom saying stop the T1 spam, and he's got T3 from his Eon inheritance here as well, so, no oh wait, he was originally Eon, from his Eon original base as well as the Titans from his inheritance from Freedom. So he's now able to produce Harveys. Maybe they don't have too much of a truce. Nicholas is trying to find out what he's up to. And so he should. Look at this. Advanced gun. 
Advanced Shield, I bet he'll be going for Gun Upgrade after this, and then charging in with his jewels. Well, I hope he'll be charging in with his jewels, otherwise he'll be... Then when you've got foes on two fronts, I could understand not wanting to have to micro your com. Ooh, yes, look at that. Ally to fight top. They have like two times our stuff. This is insane. He's tr brokering some deals, is Nicholas. And Ross, I don't think, has answered yet. Egro noting that he lost a lot of his bird power there, and a lot of his eco. I'm seeing some broadswords here out from Legit, so that could be a nice counter to the Titans. Has Ross been mixing in much flak? I don't think he has. Now I think we've got a bit of a lull as forces are building up, so let's have a quick look at Ecos. Good balance from Twitchy. He's got the smallest Eco by far, and he's really going to have to work on that, but he's balancing well at what he's got. Legit overflowing a bit, he'll have to be careful about that, have to spend more. Maybe he was... maybe Egro was spending it, and now Egro doesn't have the production. Either way, too much mass not being spent from the jet. Good balance from Nyx. Not too bad from Eggwell, given that he lost a lot of his production. Over to Ross, who's been getting a lot of hints from his teammates. Very good balance. I'm very impressed with Ross. Nicholas spending quite a lot, and also looks like he's relying on his team for power. Good balance from Salaman. Egro not happy with his allies' help or lack of it. What are people building up? I'm sure they're building up something in all this. Those top bombers still massing from Ross. Ross is fighting here, but these Titans are going to have a problem now that they're up against bricks. Mass for mass, bricks beat Titans. That said, that's quite a lot of mass in Titans right there, and there might be enough, but there are more bricks coming out from Eggroll all the time. And we have a couple more strats building up for Nicholas. So could he be planning a snipe? He is getting some scouting done over here. There are ASFs from Legit, so if Nicholas wants to get something done with the strats, he'll have to do it in one hit. But out they come. Where are they going? These mexes, maybe? Yeah, they're going on some mex raiding. Boom, lovely precise kill of two mexes. And they're just... where are they going? They're just turning around. He's... Uh, he... Take out two T2 mexes, fly away, no loss, nice and precise. Good restraint. And... Scorchers drop some fire on this remaining T2 mex from his ally Sanoman. Sanoman's gone hidden in the water, maybe Ross should use his bombers. Top is building a spider, you should draw kill them, says Crusader. He is building a spider and he's got a crab queued up right after it. Why are they called monkey lords? They obviously look like spiders. Why are they called monkey lords? Not something I've ever really thought to ask before. Theories as to why that's called a monkey lord in the comments, please, because I don't know. We've got a brick here with quite a lot of point defense to guard this expansion from Nyx, but that's a lot of pillars coming in from Twitchy. And this is just going to be cleaned off the map, which is not going to be pleasant for Nyx. He has two T3 mixes in there. 
but he finishes the monkey. And there are also broadswords to defend from the jet. And there's not really much AA in there, so there's nothing to stop those broadswords going to town on these pillars. There are a few inties, but these are T3 gunships, and if Ross is... Okay, there's quite a lot of inties, actually. But if Ross can respond with his ASFs, Ross, um, legit. If legit can respond with his ASFs, then legit's gonna be fine. However, he doesn't. Okay, now he does, but he's already lost a broadsword or two, or three. That was some unnecessary broadsword loss for legit, I think. On this side, Egro has massed quite a lot of bricks, and while there's now a couple of Percy's in with the Titans, I think this in is enough just in sheer weight of brick to drive Ross away. He's bringing up Mormon support, he's preparing ravages in defence for the his army to hold back to. And what's happening here? Was he trying to bomb this area? The straps are there, the bombs are there. Is he going for the monkey? It's certainly having pings thrown wildly at it. I think he's going for the monkey. He is, but only two strats isn't enough to do a vast amount of damage to it. The T1 bomb has come in, and those strats have been picked up by legit. He brings in his ASFs, and that's how their force goes down for very little damage to the monkey. Meanwhile, those ravagers are going to town on those bricks, and is Edgar going to pull them back? I think he has to until he's got some T3RT maybe to come and bombard that, so that would be a good choice. Some Percy's coming through the water for Salaman, and do we have a naval fan from Nicholas? No, we just have a harms. I can see where he's going with this, fill this lake with harms and suddenly nobody's going to be able to fall back to the water which will be quite nice and more Percy's coming in to the water from Salaman maybe he's planning a sneaky charge out here or here from the direction I'm assuming he's not going for Twitchy and also Twitchy is just not the threat at the moment look at the scores poor Twitchy and it's going to be only worse for him as this monkey charges on down. To which he is massing all his units in defence. And he's got Percy's coming in, he's got that big horde of pillars. But... Will that be enough to stop a monkey? His comms coming in to defend. So this is very much a last ditch. But the monkey appears to draw back. Why? What's it doing? Is he waiting for this mega, which is nearly finished? Eggwell trying to get set up over here. The Percy's from Salaman advance across the water. The harms creep continues. Look at that harms and Sam creep that he's got planned. He's going for Ross. Interesting. And after offering Ross an alliance too. Sneaky fella. Egro comes out of the water. Does he know these are coming? I don't think he knows these are coming. So that's quite a horde of strats from Nicholas now, and he took out some of Ross's cheeky little expansions here, but there's a lot of T1 anti-air and strats from Nicholas fall back. Oh, Nicholas did not enjoy the fact that they accidentally showed themselves, and now he's gathered them all the way back here.
Oh well now those Percy's are going to be seen and the Eggwell's vast horde of bricks has torps so can attack them underwater and will be more than enough to take them. The Percy's decide to go in this direction instead and the bricks pursue. Twitch he thinks he can chase down the monkey and he's got quite a lot to try it with but with the monkey and the mega that might be quite a big ask of this force and the mega opens fire. Over here the Percy's from Salaman do actually kill this expansion from Eggwell but Eggwell is sending out his troops and those Percy's are going to take some losses. On this side the monkey mega combo is getting in there and because Twitchy has managed to get his troops a little separated it gets some good kills and it pushes in. Stealth cover from the monkey and from deceivers, anti-air cover from bouncers and bangers, good combination of T2 and T3 anti-air. This is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Only a few Percy's have escaped this vast wall of bricks from Eggwell. Sanoman's getting a fatty out. And where is that going? What is it planning? Is it coming towards Twitchy? Is it coming up towards the northern team? Nicholas and Sanoman now definitely have the eco lead. but Northern Team is catching up again despite the immense amounts of damage that were inflicted on them earlier but this is quite nice as the XP's from Nyx push down this side Twitchy just charges through up the other side with a counter push the Mega backs up as Percy's come out to fight it. And the Eggwell's bricks, having fought off these Percy's, are moving across to do some damage to Ross. Ross has a lot of harpies though. This is good though from Twitchy, but Nyx has finished a fatty. He's losing eco though. How much damage can this do before the fatty kills it? And on this side, what's his com doing? This is dangerous from Twitchy's com. But he's getting work done, look at that! Not enough work, boom, down he goes. He's killed these two gens and with it the fat boy shields have gone but where in other games other players might inherit it nope twitchy was the last player on his team and down it goes all his stuff is gone there is tens of thousands of reclaim left in his base and it looks like that northern team might have a good chance of getting it because they have two XBs guarding it. That mega could just lay an egg, drop an engineer. Engineer puts up factories, spam reclaim engineers, that'd be pretty good. That said, this is a lot of strats from Nicholas. What's their plan? Are they going to try and take out these XBs? He's got a big horde of T1 bombers here clearing up egg rolls. Mexes. Sanoman's got a fatty coming in, which, if used properly, could be used to defend against these two. Bombers went on to try and hit this area, but there's enough AA in there that they were just carved apart. And here comes Sanoman's fatty along with Nicholas Strats and that monkey's taking a lot of damage I don't think it's getting out of there 
That said, Nicholas looks to be falling back with his scratch. He's not going for another pass, which would have killed it. And Salaman is falling back with a fatty, so the monkey survives, much to my surprise. And what's this I see? Salaman has T3 Arty up and firing, and it's targeting the... Painfully targeting the base of Legit, who really needs to focus on some of his shielding. Look at the eco that he's losing. Another couple of hits, uh, though, are needed to take out T3 Mexes. So it could be worse for him. Meanwhile, the strats from Nicholas come and finish off that monkey. And Egro cancels cloaking and switches to laser. Do you think he's going to do what I think he's going to do? I think he might. Unless he re-queues up cloaking after that, in which case I'd be much happier when he could end now. Have some good, honest, cybern bravery charging in with cloak and telemaser, and, and, and laser rather than going telemaser, right? There are TV transports. We can but hope. Meanwhile, Nyx starts a disruptor to try and counter the artifact coming in from Salaman. Salaman's already putting up a second duke. Meanwhile, what's Ross up to? Any game enders here? I don't see any yet. He does have only about half the eco of the North and South teams. A buffer state, if you will, providing a little defence to stop these shenanigans coming around here. This is a big mass of bricks from Eggwell, though. Will there be enough to push in? And indeed, he is going for the teleporter. No tele-defense around Nicholas as yet, but there is a nuke almost loaded and the Novox almost finished. If Eggwell can just get in and tele tele maser Nicholas and just keep on mazering around here, that could be really brutal. Nicholas finishes the Novax. And Eggwell is getting Pung. Is he going to be allowed to finish that or will Novax and Artie just rain far down on him before he has a chance to move again? How close is Nix's? Well, Nix's Disruptor is in the green and he's he's got another one planned. He's got shielding planned. At the moment, they're surviving the artillery bombardment reasonably well, and they're defending more against it. But how long is that going to last when the Novax joins in? Oh, let's go. Are they trying to mate? What happened? We were speaking about Megalith eggs earlier. We might be getting a few unplanned Megalith eggs if this goes on. That said, what's the offspring of a fat boy and a Megalith look like? Tell me in the comments below with your hot takes on this. I will be playing like Bow Chicka Wow Wow porn music here, but I'm I, I, I'm not going to. Probably. Anyway, after a very brief interlude, the Mega walks away unsatisfied. So. And the fat boy heads towards his death on the front lines, presumably. But there's the teleport, alright. But he's gone for Ross, boys. Why has he gone for Ross? Why did Eggwell go for Ross? When he could have just jumped in there and blown up Nicholas. I mean, Nicholas did have tele defense by then, I suppose. And with this amount of 
Rickery coming through, Egro will have a chance to claim this reclaim if he gets in there quickly. He jumps back to his base. I think they're targeting his HQ trying to stop him being able to produce bricks. The disruptor is up for Nyx and firing back. It looks like it's targeting roughly around here. Salaman's artillery and he is taking down some of the shields. If he can break through there that's going to be big. Good line there from Eggroll whereas Nicholas is trickling in and if this keeps up then Eggroll is going to get some big wins here. And Nicholas looks like he recognises that and pulls back and he's sending his straps to do the damage instead. There's no anti-air in here. So this is going to be pretty brutal. Oh, and Eggroll's tallying over here and he's setting up land factories. He's just going to spam engineers in there for reclaim. That's nice, I like that. And the straps continue to rain. No. They've seen him. They know he's there. I think Egro might be in for an uncomfortable awakening as the straps come in. Boom. The fire rains down on him. He's not getting out of there. And Egro goes up in smoke. He went to Telemesa. He paid the price. There are now multiple artilleries firing each way, two up from Nyx and two up from Salaman. Will the Novaks make the difference? And that nuke is loaded, why isn't he firing it? I mean, I presume he's going to try and take out the SMD first. This one is loaded twice. This one is loaded once. They notice the comm, legit's comm. Are they going to try and target that? Ecos are surprisingly level, so good job to the North team for catching up after the immense amounts of damage we saw in mid-game when Nicholas and Ross both went after their Ecos. This is dangerous though, two fat boys versus a fatty and a mega, the fatty and the mega here are not in position, there's a lot of spam and shielding supporting the force from Salaman, and almost nothing supporting the force from Nyx. It just feels like there's a, and looking at that now ticking up there, it feels like there's just a slight advantage everywhere for the southern team over the northern team. As artillery fire begins to lower these shields, cyber shields are, when assisted, are the best shields. Several from shields on their own are the best shields, when you put a cyber shield takes assistance so well look at all those drones pumping support into it, it's going to be very hard for the southern team to break through that at range they are however targeting Legit's comm with their arty Legit may have to worry about that and he sees the shields around him go down and be destroyed he runs under some more shields Look at this perfect kiting from, it's just out of range of the fat boy, it's not out of range of the mega. That mega is, but it's out of range of the mega's return fire, that mega is going to go down I think. At least if Sunnerman kites back with these fatties, which is what he should do. T1 bombers but they don't really do anything. That's a lot of gunship however, only T2 out from Legit. However, there's enough flak in there that I don't think they're going to last long. 
the crab is down into the red, but this fatty is able to get some fire down, and now it's the one that has the slight range advantage in terms of being able to hit some of this stuff while these are out of range. Surprised to see that push being repelled by Nyx, but he's done it, so props to him. Salaman working on a third duke and it doesn't look like there's much threat of anything breaking through here. Second Novax on the way for Nicholas. So we're definitely in a standoff situation, but a Scathis has been started for legit. Can he finish it? Has it been noticed? Or fire it looks like it's being targeted on Legitscom, the RT, the Novax. He comes under the clutch of shields protecting the disruptors. And the force from Salaman again pushes forward, and there's no new defensive units coming forward from Nyx because Nyx is focusing all his build power on the standoff shenanigans in the base. Fight going down underwater from these bricks, but those harms that we saw Nicholas putting up earlier are paying off, and the nuke fires. The nuke from Nicholas comes shooting out, and they are focusing down the SMD. It's into the yellow. The shields around it are down. Artillery is hitting near it, but not quite. The shield pops up, but the Novax is... It's got 800 hits left as the shield pops up over it, and it goes down 20... 20 hits left on the SMD. The nuke's coming in. The shield goes down again. Will the Novax fire in time? The shield pops up. He's blocked the nuke. He has blocked the nuke with an SMD that was down to 20 hit points and then the SMD dies. But that cut shave that may have been, but I don't think it's going to last because Nicholas is loaded once again. A new SMD is up, but it's empty. It hasn't had a chance to load. And either way, it's probably going to be arted out. And suddenly... With this pushing in, the fatty's down, the megas are down. Feels like the writing is on the wall for North Team, and I think that is going to get through. There's nothing to stop it. Both ACUs are in this area. But we have a nuke coming out the other way from Legit. Where is it? He was trying to defend. He was expecting that they, they'd hear the nuke and retreat, but they just pushed forward. He needed to aim here. A last ditch attempt and it is wasted from legit. Is he actually going to get any kills with that nuke? Only 1.9 mass killed and Nyx is in the line of fire. His disruptors go down, his shields go down and his comm goes down as Nyx is taken out. Legit still making a play for survival, and that Scathis has been going up super fast. Look at this, if he can get that Scathis up and running, it may be a clutch comeback, but this is a lot of experimental firepower charging into his base. Well, into what was Nix's base, and is now his base. What's he going to do about it, my dudes? What can he do about it? Well, we know what he's trying to do about it, but is it going to be enough? Looks like there's going to be an air fight going down, but they're going to see the Scathis. Legit walks over here trying to come into this base to protect himself from this lot pushing in. The Novak shoots him, but he's got Tito on him. He'll probably survive one Novak to get here, but they see the Scathis. If they don't focus that scathis with everything, then they're mad.
and the shields around it go down, the Novox targets it. And the Scathis dies. The last ditch survivor attempt from Ujit is crushed by Novaces and artillery from Nicholas as Saruman's forces come charging in and Legit resigns and the South team wins. What did you think of that, my dudes, my loyal viewers? For player fun, do you think South deserve to win? Could Nix and Legit have made a little more use of their win in the West when they had all that reclaim and two XBs there? to hold it. Was there any way back for Twitchy or for Ross after their respective teams were eliminated? Tell me in the comments below while you're down there. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and obey. I'm the Commissar and I will see you next time.